Hey YouTube, Brian Van Dyne here. I wanted to do a video today answering kind of the question, um, is it worth it slash how much do you make, you know, being an owner operator, dump trucker. And so there's a, there's a couple ways to answer this question. Um, and I'm going to get into basically everything that I can and be as honest with you guys as possible. Okay. So the first thing that, uh, you know, you can answer the question, is it worth it monetarily? Like, how much do you really make, Brian? Okay, so in four years of business, my business has grossed over $1 million in four years. The exact number is like 1,080-something thousand, right? Um, and in four years... And so then a lot of people say, okay, well, how much do you really make, Brian? You know, how much do you take home? You know, and there's a few other ways to answer that question. Like, say, well, I took all this home. This is home, you know. Uh, so me personally, since I started my business, I've only done... Uh, Usually, I only withdraw from the business two thousand dollars a month. You know, that's usually what I withdraw, um, and that's enough to pay the bills. I don't really need much more after that because the business it basically pays for everything that I want, or you know, everything we want. Um, like just for instance, the camera that I'm shooting you guys on, uh, or shooting me on, this uh, it's a Lumix X5. The camera. I bought it used, it was 1500 bucks, and then I just blew like two grand on lenses, <laughs> you know, and, and it's marketing and advertising, right? So it the line is kind of blurred when you say, well, how much do you take home, Brian? Well, let's see, I just bought the camera. I mean, technically it's the businesses, right? But is that going to stop me from only using it for business stuff? No, right? And so I basically bought it for myself, but the business justified the purpose because it's a business expense. Like I need the camera for business stuff, you know, to photograph. I got to take uh, shots of my work, of the trucks in action. I got to do all that stuff, you know, so it, it's a business expense. It's a write off, but it's also for me, you know. So it, when you ask the question, you know, how much do you really take home? Well, realistically, I take home $2,000 a month, and that's it. You know, that's what I pay myself, and that's what pays the bills. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but usually it's about $2,000 a month, which is like $24,000 a year, right? So this this uh, this past year, uh, 2021, right, the business grossed $496,000, right? Take home like net income was in the negative numbers, 40, negative $47,000, right? <clears throat> now, why is that number that number? I mean, everybody wants to know the answer, so I'm here to help you guys out best I can. So when you get your gross number, that's the total income, the total revenue that the business is making, not counting cash jobs or anything like that, which you guys shouldn't be doing, you know. Um, so, 496 grand for basically two trucks, two and a half trucks, you know, because I don't really work my international, my uh, P old Peterbilt like I should be, you know. I've, I've been focusing more on dispatching and stuff like that and just doing my own thing, really. Um, living life, as they say. So, why negative 47,000 is the net income? Okay, well... When you buy a $350,000 dump truck, it depreciates in value, right? And so if you get a good tax accountant, they're going to show that depreciation and they're going to stretch it out. You know, I always stretch mine out. A lot of some people, they buy something and they depreciate it in the first year or the second year. You know, they just go balls out and they, you know, it's worth, it's worth nothing now, you know, to the government. Like, come on, it didn't depreciate that fast. But so I spread it out and, uh, you know, so 
the reason my net income is negative 47 is because I buy all this stuff for the business and it's write-offs. It's tax write-offs. So it's showing that the business didn't technically make money. Like if, you know, it, it's it's hard to explain, guys. I'm not the person to really explain this stuff to you, but I'm doing the best I can, right? When you have write-offs, it shows as, you know, you lost money, right? That's the way... You know, you're trying to show the government that you didn't make, you know, $500,000 because if you net profited $500,000, your tax bill is going to be so, so high that, you know, you're going to cry, <laughs> you know. So basically, you try and show the least amount of income as you can, you know, Within legal parameters, don't break the law, obviously. Don't be tax evasion, but only pay what you have to pay, right? So that's what um, goes into that. Okay, so the the question, is it worth it? Okay, how much do you really take home? You know, it's a serious question. For me... I wouldn't choose any other lifestyle for me personally because I think it's worth it. I wouldn't be doing this for, you know, five years if I didn't think it was worth it, right? But here comes along, you know, with the, is it worth it? I wake up on a Saturday morning to come out here and grease the dump trucks. I just greased them, right? There's a grease gun sitting right there on the tire. You know, uh, is it worth it? On a Sunday, I'm making parts runs. You know, is it worth it? I'm in the rain, in the mud, replacing a frame rail on a dump truck. I had to pull the fuel tank off. I'm sitting there laying in a lake. So is it worth it? That's something you got to ask yourself. You know, me, I'm not a lazy person. I'm a very proactive, self-starting uh, type of person. And a lot of you guys that watch my channel are probably the same as me, you know. And that's why you're asking yourselves, is it worth it, you know. It's one of the questions I ask myself very often, actually. You know, is, is it worth it starting, you know, a dump truck business? Is it worth it starting any business, you know. And I think ultimately the answer is yes. Mainly because you're putting your financial stability in your own hands instead of somebody else's, right? When you go to work for a company, you don't know what their finances are. You don't know if they got $10 million in the bank or if they are all leveraged out on credit. You don't know that. They don't tell you that. You know, you can go in the next day and they there's a letter on the door saying, hey, we're out of business. Good luck to you. <laughs> no warnings, no nothing. You got it. That's what it is. You know, so it, it gives you control over your life. Right? You don't have to work 365 days a week, you know, 24 hours a day, every single day to make a decent living driving dump trucks. Um... When you first get started, I recommend working your hardest, like the most hours, the most days you can, so you know where your comfort level is, right? If you just go into it like, oh, yeah, I just bought a dump truck, I'm going to I'm going to give it a shot. You know, I'm going to try it. You know, but you're not fully into it 100%, then you're never going to know if what like what your real figures could be, you know, what's realistic for you. You know, that's why when I went into I went balls to the walls. I mean, I worked, you know, multiple shifts in a row, multiple shifts in a row. You know, most guys their first summer are not going to make 106,000 in a dump truck. You know, most guys are probably going to make 70, you know, or 80 depending on you know, if they know the right people, you know, so it, 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 it all just comes down to, do you love to work? 
And my personal answer is I love to work. My grandpa bred it into me. He's the same way. He loves to work. That's why he's 76 years old and he comes out here and chops wood with me. He comes out here 76 years old and he's helping me build a dump truck tailgate. He's 76 years old. He comes out here and helps me mill some lumber, you know, to build a greenhouse. He's 76, guys. So if, you, if you're the type of person that you want to be, you know, you want to work eight hours a day and then just go home and sit on the couch. And on a Saturday, you want to wake up at 11 o'clock in the afternoon and then be, play on your phone for four hours. Or if you're the type of person that wants to work eight hours a day and then go out with your family for dinner and then go straight to bed and then wake up at six in the morning, then it's not life for you. If you want to, you know, I'm trying to tell you guys the way my lifestyle is. My lifestyle is, is I have no alarm clock. When I wake up, I probably look at my phone for 10 to 15 minutes in the morning, just, you know, scrolling through the notifications and stuff. And then I set the phone down and I say, am I wasting too much time on my phone? Am I wasting my potential right now? After 10 to 15 minutes, I start to think in my head, am I seeing anything new or am I just scrolling just to scroll? That's the type of person I am, right? If you're that type of person, you need to start your own business like yesterday, you know? But if you're the guy that can just sit on your phone and scroll for two hours straight and then your wife asks you, how long you been on your phone? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I just got on it. Running your business is not for you, right? If you want to run a business, you have got to be proactive. You cannot be reactive. You have to be thinking in your mind, you know, what is the next thing to be productive about, right? Like I literally sat in bed for, you know, 30 minutes. I woke up. Probably about two, three minutes, I was just blinking my eyeballs, you know, trying to get adjusted to being awake. Then my daughter comes running in, starts snuggling, you know, and then I'm on my phone for 15 minutes. And then I'm like, yesterday I told the guys to leave the strong arm down. It's not raining yet. It's supposed to rain all weekend. It ain't raining. I'm going to hop on this. I'm going to go get those trucks greased. And then, not only am I going to grease the trucks. I'm going to do a video and explain to guys my lifestyle, you know, and why I think it's worth it to run a business, right? Hey, son. Hey. You know, one of the other main reasons I decided to run a business is my kids. What's this? The package. The package? Yeah. You made me a package? Yep. Says from Brian, Dad T. Dad T. Check that out, guys. Check that out. One of my favorite hats. Wait, did that fit you? Fits me perfect, too, huh? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Is it worth it, guys? It's it's 100% worth it. You know, running this business and starting this business. <clears throat> one of the things that my children will have that other kids won't have, they will have invaluable experience. When I was three years old, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, I didn't know... I probably didn't even know what, you know, I mean, I knew what a dump truck was, but I didn't know what a brake pad was. I didn't know what a kingpin was. I didn't know what an S-cam was. I didn't know what a slack adjuster was. I didn't know nothing. All I knew was cartoons. That's all I knew, you know. And so my kids, 
are going to have invaluable experience, you know. I had to learn all this stuff on my own when I gra when I bought my first dump truck. Nobody was there saying, hey, Brian, here's how you adjust brakes. It was, I don't know how to adjust brakes. I better go watch a YouTube video, you know. Now, there is a very fine line between, you know, your kids having a childhood and them, you know, not having a childhood, right? So, I try to keep a very good balance on that of what when my kids are helping me and when they're outside playing by, you know, doing kid things, enjoying growing up, you know. And they are the happiest kids I've ever seen. So I think I'm doing it right, you know, and that's my scale. If they look happy, then I'm doing a good job. If they look sad, then I'm sucking, you know. So, you know, is it worth it? One million dollars in four years, and what do I have to show for it? I have to show international paid off, green slip of paper, the title, Peterbilt, green slip of paper, the title. I own uh, Excavator 120, 100%. I own uh, Excavator 50, 100%. I own the old Dozer, 100%. I own, you know, I just bought a breaker. For the mini excavator, 100%. You know, if I don't work tomorrow, nobody's going to call me up and say, hey, uh, we need that money. You know, except for this is the only truck I did. I did finance this truck. And a lot of people think I'm like, oh, Brian, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Don't, you know, pay cash for everything. Don't do debt. You know, my main thing is you guys... You don't understand what a healthy amount of debt is. You know, that's, that's, and it's nothing against you. I didn't either. You know, when I was in my 20s, I had a credit card and I thought it was unlimited money just about, you know, I mean, I never, I always paid mine off, but I spent way more money than I would have if I didn't have a credit card. I spent way more, you know, and that's, you start to disconnect from what reality is when you start using other people's money. You know, you start spending way more, you start buying all these things, and the next thing you know, the payments come around, and then you got to have the money to pay for those things. You know, and, you know, some people, they can handle massive amounts of debt, and they can sleep at night, but me personally, I cannot sleep at night if I got, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars in debt. Like, that's not me. That's, you know, if I don't got work for three weeks straight, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care, you know. Like, the only thing that makes me care is my employees saying, hey, man, we, need, we, st we still got to work over here. I know you, you're you good, but we still need to work. We still need a paycheck. Uncle Fun's low, you know. Uh, so that's the thing that gets me a little, you know, like, oh, I got to make money still, you know, like I'm, I consider myself retired right now, just about like, I literally do not have to do anything if I don't want to. I'm at the point in my business where I could pay somebody to do everything, but that's not me. I'm not the guy that wants to pay everybody to do everything. I I enjoy doing stuff. You know, I enjoy coming out here and greasing the trucks, you know, and looking at them. I enjoy, you know, smoothing rock out and, and doing all this stuff. For me, that's fun. Some people, you know, watching other people do it is fun for them. That's not me. You know, YouTube... I do not watch a lot of YouTube guys. Like the only time I'm watching YouTube is if I'm trying to learn something. I'll be 100% honest with you. Like I don't just watch a channel just because they have cool content. Like it 
99% of the time, no. No. If they're funny, no. I'm I'm not interested. I'm not wasting my time watching something that's funny. You know, every now and then, if I'm like, you know, I have literally, I feel like I have nothing to do, then I might blow, you know, 30 minutes, an hour or something, you know, doing something stupid like that. But usually, 99% of the time, if I'm watching a video on YouTube, it's so I can learn something. I can learn a technique. I can... I can watch the way somebody's doing something, and then I can formulate my way of doing something. I absolutely love running my own business. It's my favorite thing to do. One thing that's different about me than most people is I have a a way of kind of brainwashing myself. I know that's so weird to put it like that. But so when I first started my business, let me just put it this way. It, it's so hard to explain. What you surround yourself by is what you will become. Right? And it sounds super stupid, but it's it's what it is. Like, let me just give you one of my main examples of myself and how I force myself to grow in these ways. When I was growing up, I just listened to the radio station just like everybody else, right? And I had no progress in life, nothing, you know? And then I decided, you know what? If you do the same thing, you get the same results, right? So try something different and you'll get a different result, right? So I started listening to motivational speakers. I started, you know, uh, listening to financial gurus and that type of stuff, right? And it totally, like at first, you know, your your mind is saying, oh, this stuff's stupid. This isn't going to help you. It, it, you know, it's stupid. But then you realize six months in that your mentality has totally changed. Your willingness to do something is way more. Like, for example, if I'm just listening to regular country music or, you know, rap or rock or whatever, just regular music, my willingness to work extra long hours, it ain't there. I'll be honest with you. It is not there. But if I start listening to, like, Eric Thomas or something, Dude, I can work 16-hour days. Like, <laughs> I don't know how it works. I do not know how it works. But I can tell you right now, if I started listening to motivational speakers, my go-get-it attitude, go-make-that-money attitude, you know, go hit the clock and stay on the clock, you know, it it's way better. So if you want to change where you're at, one of the best things I can tell you is, don't listen to regular music. Don't watch regular television. Don't, uh, you know, get on Facebook and look at just regular stuff. You know, if you want to change where you're at, you have to change your environment. Force yourself to change, right? Start telling yourself that you love to work. Start telling yourself you love, you know, the freedom that this is going to give you, basically. You know, and that's that's pretty much one of the things that I did when I first started my dump truck business. Um, you know, I, I, I watched a lot of uh, motivational videos on YouTube. I listened to a lot of motivational speakers, mainly just Eric Thomas. You know, I listened to Dave Ramsey, Eric Thomas. Um, Les Brown was pretty cool. Hey, buddy. Uh, I love this guy. Here, it's like, Yogi. You're getting old. Yes, you are. You're getting the old doggy, aren't you? This is my dog, Mason. We rescued him eight years ago from a shelter. They said he was two, so we're estimating he's probably ten. Getting pretty old. Good dog. Yeah, you're a good boy, aren't you? Say hi, Mason. 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 Say hi,
say hello to everybody. Yeah, you want some attention still? It's cold out here, isn't it? Where do I see myself in five years? I see myself owning five dump trucks from total of five. I see myself adding, you know, three more super dumps. The main thing I want to do is I want to get my house built this year. My goal is to get it done this year, 2021, 2022. I want it, I really want to be moving in by Christmas. That's kind of my goal. I'm really trying to shoot for that. I'm really trying to push for that. And I've written it down. And so that's what I'm shooting for. But I would be, I would still be very happy if there was four walls and a roof put up. <laughs> Even if we didn't get to move in by Christmas. That's my goal right now. And, uh, you know, we've worked hard enough for that. So that's where we're at. I love running my dump truck business, you know. And every now and then I think about selling everything, but it'll it'll never happen. You know, I, I listed the old Peterbilt. It hasn't sold. If it doesn't sell... Well, I'm not going to drop the price. I'm just going to take it off the market and I'll park it right over there, right behind the International. I made a nice spot. I was going to put a gazebo there, but the more and more I think about it, the cooler it would look if I just parked my old Peterbilt there. You know, because realistically, I don't really need a picnic area for people to come over out here, you know. Probably just park it over there. See what happens.